Hi, this is the video for the paper Amalgamation SNP, a tame fragment of existential second order logic for the conference Computability in Europe. My name is Manuel Budierski and these are my co-authors. My name is Simon Kneuer. My name is Florian Starke. We are working at the TU Dresden. Existential second order logic is a powerful formalism to express computational problems. We work over some fixed finite relational signature tau. For example, if you want to talk about graph properties, our signature contains a single binary relation symbol. An existential second order sentence over this signature is a sentence that starts by existential quantifications over some new relation symbols R1 up to Rn, followed by some first order sentence that might use the relation symbols from tau, but also the existentially quantified relation symbols. For example, we can write down an existential second order sentence which holds on a given graph if and only if the edges can be partitioned into two triangle-free graphs. This can be done by quantifying over two binary relations R and B and the first order part which states that R contains no triangles, B contains no triangles and every edge of the graph is either in R or in B. The complete graph with five vertices, for instance, satisfies this sentence, while the complete graph with six vertices does not, as one can easily check. It is easy to see that every property of finite structures that you can write down in existential second order logic is isomorphism closed and contained in the complexity class NP. Interestingly, the converse is true as well. This is known as Fagin's theorem. It states that an isomorphism closed class of finite structures is in NP if and only if it can be expressed in existential second order logic. Note that this is a pure logic description of the class NP, which does not involve the definition of Turing machines or other machines. If P is different from NP, then there are problems in NP that are neither in P nor NP complete. This is known as Lardner's theorem. The problems constructed by Ladner are extremely artificial. This motivated Feder and Vardy in their famous joint work to investigate fragments of existential second order logic that have a complexity dichotomy, in the sense that every problem that can be expressed in the fragment is either in P or NP complete. An important fragment of existential second order logic is called SNP for strict NP. Here, the first order part of the sentence is required to be a universal sentence. We do not allow the use of the equality symbol in these uh, sentences. The example sentence that we have seen earlier was of this form. The example sentence was also monotone. Here we additionally require that every input relation symbol appears negatively. In our example sentence, this corresponds to the fact that if a graph does not satisfy the formula, then adding edges to the graph results in a graph that again does not satisfy the formula. So we may view the edges of the graph as constraints. The more edges we have, the harder it can be to satisfy all the constraints. And finally, Feder and Vardy also considered the class monadic SNP, which consists of those SNP sentences where all existentially quantified relation symbols are unary. Even though these restrictions appear to be quite restrictive, Feder and Vardy managed to prove that every problem in NP is polynomial time equivalent to a problem in monotone SNP and to a problem in monadic SNP. So both of these fragments do not have a complexity dichotomy. However, if we impose both restrictions simultaneously, we obtain a fragment called MMSNP for monotone monadic SNP. And for this class, Feder and Vardy conjectured that there is a complexity dichotomy. This has been shown in 2017, using a classification of the complexity of finite domain constraint satisfaction problems. A constraint satisfaction problem is a computational problem that can be specified by fixing a finite or infinite structure B 
with a finite relational signature tau. Formally, CSP of B is the class of all finite relational tau structures that map homomorphically to B. For example, if B is the clique with k vertices, then the CSP of B is the k-colorability problem. The elements of B play the role of colors, and a homomorphism cannot map adjacent vertices in a graph to the same vertex in the clique. In 2017, Andrei Bulatov and Dima Zhuk independently proved the so-called dichotomy conjecture of Feder and Bardi, which states that if B is a finite structure, then CSP of B is either in P or in P complete. This in turn was already known before to be equivalent to a complexity dichotomy for MMS and P. The central question of our paper is, are there logics that are more expressive and still have a complexity dichotomy? What do we mean by a logic? Here we follow the liberal definition of uh, logic that is also adopted in the famous open question from finite model theory, which asks whether there is a logic for the complexity class P. In particular, what we require from a logic is that we can decide effectively whether a given string is a sentence in this logic. That is, we require that the syntax of the logic is decidable. In the following, we introduce a new fragment of existential second-order logic called amalgamation SNP. We prove that amalgamation SNP has a decidable syntax. Then we show that it has a complexity dichotomy, P versus NP complete, if and only if a certain class of CSPs for infinite structures P has a complexity dichotomy. Finally, as another application of the connection to CSPs, we use known results about CSPs to derive that amalgamation SNP sentences can be evaluated in polynomial time on instances of bounded tree width. To define amalgamation SNP, we first have to define amalgamation classes. These are classes of finite structures that are closed under isomorphisms, substructures, and that additionally have the amalgamation property. If B1 and B2 are structures in the class, and A embeds into both B1 and B2, then there must exist a structure C in the class, called the amalgam, such that both B1 and B2 embed into C, and such that the corresponding embedding diagram commutes. In our pictures, we draw A as the intersection of B1 and B2, which is without loss of generality because the class is isomorphism closed. An example of an amalgamation class is the class of all finite graphs. Clearly, this class is closed under isomorphisms and substructures, and as amalgam, we can take the union of the two graphs B1 and B2 over A. Another fundamental example is the class of all finite linear orders. Here we can no longer take the union of B1 and B2 as an amalgam, because the union need not be a linear order. But it is easy to see that the union can be completed to a linear order. The central theorem about amalgamation classes is Freise's theorem, which states that for every amalgamation class, there exists an up to isomorphism unique countable structure F, which we call the Freise limit of the class, which embeds a finite structure if and only if the structure is from the class and which is homogeneous, which means that isomorphisms between finite substructures can be extended to automorphisms. If a countable structure with a finite relational signature is homogeneous, then this means that it must have a large automorphism group. An example of such a homogeneous structure is the order of the rationals. This is the Freise limit of the class of all finite linear orders. We can finally define amalgamation SNP. An amalgamation SNP sentence is an SNP sentence where the input signature tau is still arbitrary, but where the existentially quantified relation symbols are all binary, and where each conjunct of the first order part is of one of two possible forms. Either it is a quantifier-free formula that only uses the existentially quantified relation symbols, or 
it is an implication where on the left we have an input relation symbol from tau and on the right we have a quantifier free formula that only uses the existentially quantified relation symbols. Finally, we require that the following class is an amalgamation class. We consider all structures in the signature of the existentially quantified relation symbols that can be expanded to models of the first order part of our sentence. Let's have a look at some examples. The problem whether a given directed graph is acyclic can be expressed by the following amalgamation S and P sentence. We existentially quantify over a single binary relation T. The first order part of the formula expresses that T extends the binary input uh, relation, is transitive and irreflexive. It can be verified that the class of all finite, transitive, irreflexive graphs is an amalgamation class. So this sentence is indeed an amalgamation SNP sentence. Note that the problem is precisely the CSP of the order of the rationals that we have seen earlier. The betweenness problem. Is the CSP for a ternary relation over the rationals which contains all triples where the middle entry lies strictly between the first and the third entry of the tuple. Here we again quantify over a transitive and irreflexive relation T and we add the conjunct that the betweenness constraints on x, y, z imply that T of x, y and T of y, z or T of z, y and T of y, x holds. This is a well-known computational problem that is uh, NP-complete. As in the case of MMSNP, there is a tight connection between the problems that can be expressed in amalgamation SNP and a certain class of infinite domain constraint satisfaction problems. To define this class, we need two fundamental definitions for model theory. We write FORP of f for some class of forbidden structures f for the class of finite structures that do not embed any of the structures from f. A class C of finite structures is called finitely bounded if there exists a finite set f of structures such that C equals FORP of f. Note that a class C is finitely bounded if and only if there exists a universal sentence such that the finite models of that sentence are precisely the members of C. A structure is called finitely bounded if its age is finitely bounded. It is easy to see that the constraint satisfaction problem for a finitely bounded structure is in NP. We simply have to guess a set of tuples that we can add to the relations of our structure so that the resulting structure avoids all of the finitely many forbidden structures. The second definition that we need is the definition of first order reducts. A structure A is a first order reduct of a structure B if A and B have the same base set and if each relation of A has a first order definition in B. For example, the ternary betweenness relation has a first order definition over the order of the rationals. Michael Pinsker and I conjecture that every first order reduct of a finitely bounded homogeneous structure has a CSP that is either NP or NP complete. We now link amalgamation SNP with the complexity of CSPs for reducts of finitely bounded homogeneous structures. In the first direction, every amalgamation SNP sentence phi describes the CSP for a first order reduct of a binary finitely bounded homogeneous structure. The proof of this direction is relatively straightforward. By assumption, the models of the first order part of phi restricted to the existentially quantified relation symbols form an amalgamation class and hence have a phi C limit. This limit then has a first order reduct whose CSP is precisely the class of finite models of phi. In the other direction, if C is a reduct of a binary finitely bounded homogeneous structure, then the CSP of C can be expressed in amalgamation SNP. This might again look straightforward, but we warn the audience that there is some complication in the proof, arising from the fact that we do not allow equality in SNP sentences. So for instance, if you want to find an amalgamation SNP sentence for the CSP of Q with the order, 
Now we cannot use the age of Q as the corresponding amalgamation class because the age of Q cannot be universally axiomatized without equality. Please look uh, into the conference proceedings to learn about the idea how to fix this issue. As a corollary, we obtain that amalgamation SNP has a complexity dichotomy if and only if the infinite domain dichotomy conjecture is true for first order reducts of binary finitely bounded homogeneous structures. We still have to argue that amalgamation SNP is a logic. Recall the definition of amalgamation SNP. The crucial place is the last item. How do we know whether the class defined there has the amalgamation property? If the syntax of amalgamation SNP should be decidable, we need to effectively decide this question. And indeed, we present an algorithm for this task. Suppose that F is a finite set of finite binary relational structures. Let M be the maximal size of a structure in F, and let L be the number of isomorphism types of two element structures in FORB of F. Suppose that FORB of F does not have the amalgamation property. It is well known and easy to show by induction that then there is also a so-called one-point amalgamation diagram that fails. A one-point amalgamation diagram is an amalgamation diagram where B1 and B2 have precisely one element more than A. Now, for each isomorphism type between the extra point of B1 and the extra point of B2, the resulting structure is not in FORB of F. So for each of those isomorphism types, there must be a copy of a structure in F that embeds into the respective structure. So already the substructure of the amalgamation diagram of size at most L times M minus two plus two that contains all those copies fails. So we can check the amalgamation property by checking all one point amalgamation diagrams up to this size. In the paper, we prove that amalgamation SNP contains uh, some other fragments of existential second order logic that have been studied in the literature. And we also present one application. For many computational problems, it is known that if you restrict the input to structures of tree width at most k for some fixed k, then the problem becomes polynomial time solvable. We show that this is the case if your problem can be expressed in amalgamation SNP. In fact, one can then use a data log program to solve the problem. Data log is an important formalism from database theory. This basically follows from a result with Victor Dalmauro about the power of data log for constraint satisfaction problems. An obvious open question is, can we drop the assumption that in amalgamation SNP, the existentially quantified predicates are binary? This is related to the open question whether we can effectively decide the amalgamation property for a given finitely bounded class. Finally, there is a challenge for our community of a completely different type. By now, we all know about the dramatic consequences of human-caused global warming that we will be suffering from in the future. Our community contributes to this, mainly by our particular conference publication system which involves a considerable and ever-increasing amount of air traffic. We believe that our community needs to make an effort to reduce its carbon footprint. To join forces, there's the platform TCS for Future, which we invite you to visit.